Let's speak now to uh, Alexei Muraviev. He's an associate professor of uh, national security and strategic studies at uh, Curtin University. He joins us now live from Perth in Australia. Welcome to the programme. So a residential apartment building was hit there in Dnipro. 35 uh, people are dead. Is this part of a Russian strategy to, to, to weaken uh, the civilian population's morale? Look, I mean, it can, it can well be, even though the Russians continue to claim that all the attacks directed at military infrastructure and key energy infrastructure. There's been a, a bit of a controversy happening in Ukraine because, according to one of the close aides of President Vladimir Zelensky, his name is Alexei Aristovich, he went on Ukrainian television, um, speaking Russian, by the way, and, and, and he actually claimed that uh, this, this uh, tragedy was a result of Ukraine shooting down incoming Russian missile that was flying apparently somewhere else. And it just uh, happened to be a tragic incident, which clearly went viral in Ukraine, as you can understand. Aristovich came under severe attack, including uh, for, uh, forcing the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense um, um, uh, to make their own statements, including the fact that they cannot intercept this type of uh, missile. Uh, but it certainly helped the Russians to, to mount this narrative, saying it wasn't us. It was the Ukrainian uh, mistake that contributed to the to the collapse of the building. Having said that, Russia is moving into a new phase of their offensive in Ukraine, which uh, was marked by the appointment of Chief of General mm -hmm. Staff, uh, General of Army. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that new phase. Um, and we see and, that... And uh, as a result, there was an intensification. Alexei, I don't know if, if, if you can hear me. Maybe. Yes, I can. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's talk about that new that new phase now that Russia is in, and they're holding joint drills now uh, with Belarus. How concerned are you about this? Look, I mean, the, the first thing we need to remember that uh, the war in Ukraine started after Russia completed their drills uh, with Belarus uh, earlier last year. And just like this year, the Russians were also saying this has nothing to do about invading anyone. It was more about playing... Um, uh, playing war games with our regional ally. And it's about um, uh, ensuring that uh, the common defense space uh, that is shared between Russia and Belarus will be defended. We need to remember, and I'm sp certainly speaking here from the military strategic perspective, before a country moves into, into real combat, uh, the military or, or naturally have, uh, need to have time to practice in order to improve coordination, in order to be battle ready, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So based on last year's experience, no one can rule out the possibility that Russia will not attempt to attack Ukraine from the north again. And the fact that uh, the Ukrainian authorities are once again fortifying Kyiv, they're, mm -hmm. they're mounting barricades in the city, they're building multi echelon defenses on the outskirts of the city, meaning that the Ukrainians taken the threat from the north quite seriously. Mm. Okay, and meanwhile, as all of this takes place, there's so much talk about uh, the German tank, uh, the battle tanks that Ukraine wants. Uh, there are reports today saying that they will not be delivered in, until 2024. How important is this and what would be the impact? Look, there are two important factors here. One is that the West has lifted once uh, yet another self-imposed restriction on, on supplying to Ukraine because main battle tanks would not necessarily be called, uh, classified as defensive systems. They can be regarded as uh, offensive combat systems. Um, uh, I, I envisage that some of the tanks will arrive this year. The, the question is how many? Um, obviously, if, if the bulk of them will, will arrive to Ukraine in 2024, it's not going to have the Ukrainians this year because I believe this year will be a decisive year of the campaign. But we should also not be holding our breath uh, about these new arrivals, because if the numbers will be limited, uh, uh, the Russians would not have a massive challenge in, in neutralizing those tanks, because at the end of the day, the Russians develop a lot of their advanced military machinery, not to counter the Ukrainians, but to counter these Western military technologies that are coming into Ukraine right now. And we need to remember, in the absence of Ukraine's area superiority, all these advanced ground systems are vulnerable as they would be susceptible to aerial attacks, which the Russians will certainly take full advantage of uh, once they will see those targets on the battlefield. Thank you so much. Alexei Muraviev, speaking to us there from Perth, Australia. Appreciate your time and your, and your expertise.